The Class 230 battery train is a development of Vivarail's D-Train concept which originally sought to repurpose ex-London Underground stock and upcycle the units to help plug the gap left by the withdrawal of Pacers. The idea being that the units could be converted quickly to DMUs to be used on branch lines, as at the time there didn't appear to be a replacement for Pacers in the pipeline. As we all know, things didn't go quite to plan and despite Viverail purchasing the D78 stock in 2014, the first units didn't enter service until December 2018 when the first of London North Western Railways units entered service on the Marston Vale line. Five Class 230s were due to be delivered to Transport for Wales shortly after, but unfortunately the first units didn't enter service until April this year, and have since been very problematic with multiple failures and an inability to achieve the journey time from Wrexham to Bidston of one hour, leading to delays and cancellations. LNR's three Class 230s now appear to have gone to Great Western Railway, which means the only other D trains currently in service are five Class 484 units operated by South West Railway on the island line, which, as far as I can tell, do seem to be working well, but their conversion was a lot more straightforward. So that's a brief bit of history, which has been a bit rocky to say the least, but it does still seem that there's a future for the D train project. Currently it is still a case of watch this space with TFW's units who having reportedly invested £25 million in the units will be keen to try to get them to work. The other possibly best hope for the D-Train project however is the battery train trial on the two mile long Greenford branch line between West Ealing on the Great Western Main Line and Greenford which is on the Central Line. In order to keep the project alive, Great Western Railway has had to purchase the intellectual property rights for the fast charging system that Viverell had patented before the company collapsed. GWR has also purchased 67 D78 stock vehicles and has taken on some of the technicians who worked for Viverell. For the trial, 213001 has been fitted with a unique fast charging system and six 84 kilowatt hour battery rafts, which, according to GWR, could provide enough charge for nine return trips over the Greenford branch. I actually rode 230001 at Rail Live in 2017, when at the time it was the prototype for the DMU conversion, but it's good to see that it has a new lease of life. The rapid charging system consists of two conductor rails placed between the running rails, which draw power from a static battery, which can recharge the batteries on the unit in less than 10 minutes. The static battery is used as it can be trickle charged from the grid and then when needed provide a large amount of current to the train that a standard third rail system would not be able to deliver. To charge the unit, shoe gear is lowered, which consists of two shoes, which come into contact with the conductor rails. Then, when charging is complete, the shoe gear is lifted back up and the conductor rail is de-energised, which makes the system incredibly safe. The lithium phosphate batteries are different to those fitted to TFW's hybrid units, which have four battery rafts which are charged by the diesel engines. The life of the batteries is expected to be between 8 and 10 years in primary use, then a further 8 to 10 years of secondary use. So the batteries will last up to 10 years on the train and then can be used as a static battery after that for up to a further 10 years. If successful, the system, which has an efficiency of 68%, could repay the embedded carbon of 250 tonnes in just one year versus using diesel traction, which only has an efficiency of 27%. The unit will be maintained at GWR's Reading depot, where the ex Viverail technicians will be based, with the trip from Reading to West Ealing requiring around half of the battery charge. GWR aim to commence testing imminently and hope to have the unit in passenger service by the beginning of 2024, but before that can happen, Network Rail must first install the rapid charging system at West Ealing, which should be completed by the end of this year. Unfortunately, visitors were not able to step on board, but I was told the interior refit is similar to TFW's units with a mixture of airline, table and longitudinal seats, as well as a toilet. In the end, the D-Train concept did not deliver on the original plan to help with the DMU shortage, but Adrian Shooter's vision for upcycling rail vehicles may still live on, 
and it's a testament to Mr. Shooter's foresight and the ingenuity of the Viverail team that despite the collapse of the company, others can still see a lot of promise in the rapid charging system and wish to continue with the project. It doesn't feel like that long ago that many within the rail industry and commentators such as myself were skeptical about the usefulness of battery trains. But now I sincerely hope that this trial is successful, not least because there is the potential for it to be implemented on other lines such as the Rex and Binston line. And in theory, with less to go wrong than the diesel battery hybrids, there's every chance that this trial could succeed.